like this and we stand on the sideline. I'm 56 years old, I have two boys that live in this country and I am compelled to be out here to do something of this spirit, of this life. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. Last week when everything kind of went to haywire, buildings are burning and all of that, the first thing that I, the first thought that I had was of my family and my friends and my loved ones. So actually the first weekend I took time to step away from social media networks and anything that would trigger me and I took some time to actually dive right into what is remembering who I am first and not what the media says that I am, not what the media says about my nieces and nephews, the ones that I look at every single day. And so once I got my rest, once I unplugged, once I decided, you know what, I'm fully, I have a lot of energy and I love to see the representation that we have right now because it looks more and more like a mixture of people, not just people of color, not just black people in particular, but we're seeing people who are non-black, who are white in particular, that are actually taking ownership of the devastation that's been happening to us at this time. I think the media on a large scale outside of D.C. is showing rioting and looting, and that's a microcosm. Most people are very peaceful, very positive, and they want to collaborate, meet people, and they want to speak to the issues and find ways that we can, you know, just figure out the systemic racism and uh, economic inequity we have here in the city. I don't know if you know it if you're from D.C., but we have an 81 to 1 white to black wealth gap for our residents here in the district. So this is another opportunity to us focus on uh, economic empowerment and helping to bridge that gap by helping all people in the city. To be honest with you, they're going to have to put some money in the black communities to the black, to the in the right hands who won't sell out. That's very important. A lot of the people's who money, the hands reach, they end up selling out at some point. We got to put it in the hands of somebody who said it's not even about the money. It's, I won't touch a dollar of this. This is about rebuilding and repairing our community. That's going to change it. Yes, yeah, so I want to make sure that Washington, D.C. maintains our ability to make sure that there is justice for all of the residents that are in Washington, D.C. and that we have true equity here across all eight wards. We want to make sure that black lives do matter and making sure that all people in the district know that it is very imperative that we have justice in our justice systems, we have justice in our food systems, we have justice in our housing systems, and making sure that the world knows that black lives do matter. What do I want justice to look like? I want justice to look like a systematic overhaul. I want justice to look like digging everything up from the root and starting over, laying a new foundation without blood and only water, you know, a new foundation with brick and mud and not blood and guts and my ancestor's spirit. That's what justice looks like. Not just putting more people in prison, like not just hurting the people who hurt us, but healing the people who hurt us and healing ourselves and moving forward to something radical that folks can't even name yet because it's so big in our imaginations. Oh, it's a very terrible thing. I myself have been beaten by the police. Uh, five times, twice with handcuffs on, you know what I mean? And people don't understand though that, that, that these are people who we pay through taxes to keep us safe. And then they, you know, they got all the um, firepower as far as the guns, communications, ride gear, and they always gonna be an advantage. But the thing is, they lock us all up. And they say they, 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 when they say they arrest you, they arrest you for your safety and his safety, but he the one who got the gun. And a lot of times everything is done on their terms. It's just an unfair situation. I think it's about raising our young people up. It's hard to get it in your 30s. It's hard to get it in your 70s. The conversations I had with my grandma, I'd just be letting her have it because I'd be like, you did your part. But with our children, now is the time.